All right, so um, I've listened to, I know you've uh, been part of this conference in one way or the other in terms of organizing and even having your a part of your ministry staff being part of it. Um, what are some of the key takeaways that the ministry has picked from this conference and how do you intend to, you know, uh, use these lessons to make to improve the systems you know in in the government of Ghana thank you very much uh, for me in the first place those conferences has re-emphasized what we were doing and it has reinforced our decision to use evidence for policy shaping and policy making we are a, a ministry of government that is actually in charge of generating evidence by doing monitoring and evaluation so if we are talking of evidence to action then to us it is one of the, the things that have, we have realized is that we now uh, has reaffirmed what we've been doing that uh, the evidence we are gathering from our monitoring should actually be taken serious and be used to shape and reshape policy issues and I also think that we've also learned from the international scene now we have more than 15 countries represented here. So we also learn from, even though we might be doing even similar things, but people are going about it in different ways. People are doing pure research, others are doing evaluation, others are, but we all aim at gathering evidence to actually shape policy direction. And I think it's been one of the best things that have come out of this uh, conference. Uh, great. So uh, maybe the uh, the last question would be, um, you know, corruption is a very is a very serious issue in, in Africa, in most African countries. I was reading a research that was saying, you know, um, in every in, in national annual national budgets for most African countries, almost a third of it is lost to corruption. Um, what do you think is the role of you know a depart a ministry like M and E to tackling corruption? Yeah, thank you. I think that is one road that has not yet been actually emphasized a lot. If we do proper monitoring and evaluation, it's use, it should contribute to the reduction in corruption. Uh, talk of any project design, we talk about the goals and objectives, the activities involved, and therefore the targets we are expecting to achieve in the particular, at a particular point in time. If we actually stick to these project timelines, we are expecting that we also stick to the resources that have been allocated for the various activities in the project. Anything that is wayward or anything that goes far away from what we've planned for means that we are going actually beyond what we are expected to do and it should become an outlier and for, for anybody to set up. So it should be able to contribute to reduction in corruption. It should also, because we also normally start the design with what we call something like um, resource base, or re, uh, we have a resource framework. The resource framework is expected to come out, uh, indicate what we are expecting to achieve at a particular time. We can't now talk of uh, deploring X resources. I will not be able to actually show what we have actually achieved in that particular time. And that one too should be able to reduce corruption. Thank you so very much. And with me also here is, uh, is Mr. Mr. Kobna, the Chief Director for the Ministry 